Returning to Spain, we're looking at an image of Christ in majesty, an image that we've seen quite a bit before. And Spain is known for producing murals, primarily frescoes in this period. They're playing off of a lot of the ideas visually that we would see, for example, in the Byzantine, but then translating them into fresco because it's going to be less expensive, it's faster to produce. They just don't have the artisans to create the mosaics that we saw during the Byzantine. And what we see is an image that has a great deal of formality to it. In other words, it's modeled. There's certain specific elements that have to be there. The sign of benediction, the image of scripture in the left hand, the throne, the mandorla surrounding, the halo around Jesus' head. So it's very similar to what we've seen before, but without the mosaic. It's very brightly colored, but it's still very blunt, very linear form. And the entire thing is very linear. It's very similar to what we saw from Celtic art. Think of the first St. Matthew of the Book of Doro, that very, very linear form. They're not trying to create something that looks real or something that looks as if you could pluck it off the wall. They're trying to create images that are going to assist in prayer. And here Jesus is surrounded again by our four evangelists. We have pots of incense burning around. We have labels around each or near each of the figures so that a priest, for example, could use this as a didactic tool, could use this to teach the lessons of Christianity. Beneath him, we see a series of saints, not uncommon for the time, as well as people that you would be used to in medieval life. Remember, the Romanesque, we wouldn't talk about Romanesque life. We talk about medieval life because we're at the end of the medieval. For example, near these windows, we see people that would be very commonly seen. So, for example, an entertainer, a dancer, etc. And this is not to say that we should dance around Jesus necessarily, but rather that everyone would be involved. It's to make this really relatable to make the world part of what is Jesus's kingdom and a reminder that he should be part of every part of your life, at least at the time. Remember, at the time, religiosity is going to be at the center of their lives. We don't live in a particularly secular world in this late medieval period.